Hey everyone, how are we doing today? This is James Sweeney, aka Split Suit, and today we're going to review a hand sent in by Jay. This is a hand from 1-2 Live, where Jay has 10-6 suited and needs to choose a line with bottom 2 pair. So let's check it out. Okay, so in this hand we're in the big blind with 10-6 suited, there's a limp, another limp, another limp, and here decides to check his option. And in the write-up, Jay says this, People here know I play really tight, and if I make a decent size raise, most fold. So I wanted to mix it up, so keep that in mind as we're going through the rest of the hand. In this situation, we started the hand with only 30 big blinds, definitely not something that I suggest doing unless you have like a really super, super strong strategy at 30 big blinds, and you think that it's more profitable for you to play 30 big blinds than it is for you to play 100 or 200 big blinds, right? So a lot of players who do the short stack thing, they do so either because they're trying to keep their buy-in more minimal and they're trying not to like have these huge swings. And honestly, if you're really, really good at short stacking, okay, maybe, but more often than not, you're better off buying in deep, learning how to get better at deeper stack play rather than trying to like play this really, really short stat game because really, really short stat games are one, they're pretty quite boring and they're just super, super mathematical. There's really not a lot of decision making and it doesn't force you to grow as a player. And I'd always rather see you guys grow as players rather than sit here, play a really boring, easy game and stagnate as a player. So with that little rant out of the way, here we go. Flop bottom two. Awesome. And here decides to check. So this is a limped pot. And yes, I understand your logic of people know you play tight, so you're scared about making, you know, big bets, big raises because everyone's going to go away, but you don't have a lot of money here. It's very, very easy to get stacks inside if you start betting here, right? Bet, 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 and money's all in. It's pretty easy. And the thing you have to remember is that most people are much more apt to call you than they are to call your check raise, right? So if you stab here for seven, 10 X, ace X, all that stuff is going to continue much more liberally. Whereas if you decide to try to go for a check raise, it's very easy for something like 10 X to get away from it. And even possibly like a weak ace X and mind you, no one raised preflop. So really strong ace X's are probably not in here. So I'm not sitting here trying to like find some creative mix up. I just want to play really, really straightforward, really, really value injected and just bet here. And I would honestly just bet it out for pot. You know, if you want to bet eight, cool. If you want to bet 10, awesome. It's, it's live, you know, it doesn't really matter all that much and just start pounding from there. I don't like going for the check in this situation. And in this spot, it ends up getting checked through. Okay. Nine on the turn here decides to bet and here decides to overbet. So this kind of conflicts with what you said earlier, where you said people know I play tight, and if I make a decent size better raise, that most people fold. And then you decide to overbet in a situation where you never have bluffs. And this card is not excellent for trying to get something like 10x to continue, unless it's like 10.8 or maybe 10.7. So this is just one of those where like, you missed your opportunity by not betting the flop, and now you're desperately trying to get that opportunity back. And sometimes when you miss an opportunity, it's not best to get your shovel and dig back and try to like hopefully get yourself out of it. It's make the best decision you can as played where we are right this moment. Now it's time to readjust and recreate a line and strategy. So in this situation, I don't particularly love 15. I think you just need to fire the flop and as played, you know, just bet here for pot. I don't think it has to be 15 here. We luckily end up getting a call, which is awesome, but then we only end up betting 25 on the river when we boat up, and I don't really care if it's a six on the river or you know anything five or lower. I think we have the best hand a super, super large chunk of the time, but my question is this. Why not just shove, right? Villain called an overbet on the turn, which means he's probably sitting there with like ace-x or 10-x that they're comfortable with or, or possibly a draw the whiff. But if they have a draw the whiff, they're not going to call 25. They're not going to call 45. They're not going to call 15. It doesn't matter, right? So your whole goal here is to maximize value against ace-x or 10-x if it's really, really sticky. And there's really, in my opinion, not a huge difference between going 25 and 45 and trying to get that call. Now, in the write-up, Jay said that on the river, he was hoping that Villain would re-raise him. And I don't think there's any reason to think that Villain's going to re-raise you. He doesn't have a strong hand, right? He doesn't have aces, he doesn't have tens, he probably doesn't have other things like pocket nines, right? All that stuff would have either raised prefop or raised somewhere along the way or bet somewhere along the way. He doesn't have a strong hand, and it's very unlikely that he improved on the six in any meaningful way other than improving to two pair with a decent kicker. So this is the kind of scenario where punish, 
punish inelasticity and understand when your opponent's range really has nothing in it that you can induce a raise from. This is one of those situations. There's nothing you can induce a raise from here. So it's your pure responsibility to bet as large as possible, maximize value the times that they're inelastic and can't fold ace x or 10x, whatever it is, it's on you to do that. And I don't, again, I don't think there's any difference between going 25 and 45 here. I think you just leave money on the table when you go 25. You know, if this person called 15 on the turn with queen 10, I think they're calling 45 on the river with queen 10 as well. So I think we left money on the table here. And this is just part of what I'm talking about when you're playing a really, really short stack play is it's so technical. And any mistake you make when you're playing short stacked is like just crushing your hourly. So I challenge you for the next little while, try to buy in full, try to work on that strategy rather than working on a 30 big blind strategy. And also in this situation, I think you're way overthinking it. Just play really, really straightforward in these live one, two games, bet flop, go from there as played. If you're going to play it this way, definitely make sure you go for the full thing on the river and punish, punish that inelasticity. So Jay, thank you very much for the great hand. If you or anyone else has a poker hand you'd like me to review in a video, feel free to send it to me directly at splitsuit.com slash send. And you can always ask me a poker question at splitsuit.com slash ask. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or thoughts on this hand, feel free to drop a comment. Otherwise, I'll see you back next week with a brand new video. And in the meantime, good luck out there and happy grinding.